This past year, 2020, has been very strange in a lot of ways, not just due to the pandemic, but also what you saw in the stock markets. For example, the benchmark S&P 500 index dipped around 34% earlier in the year before it turned back around and recovered all of its losses within five months to finish off the year 2020 up around 16%. You also saw crazy stuff like crude oil's future dipping down super low into the negative territory. You think with all that went on in the year 2020 with these super wild equity swings up and down that we would have purged all of that out of our systems, but that simply has not been the case here in the year 2021. In the last month or so, we've watched downtrodden stocks, forgotten stocks like GameStop, which just six months ago was trading for around $4 a share and on January 20th was trading for about $20 a share, finished just this past week up around $325 per share, and hit nearly $500 in the pre-market trading last Thursday. Another insane example of these wild stock moves is that the theater chain AMC, which just two weeks ago was trading for around $2 a share, but just last week was up almost $20 per share. Now the question then becomes is how on earth are such wild fluctuations or wild moves possible? Short answer is that there's a group of retail investors that wanna show Wall Street what they're capable of. Essentially, a large group of retail investors have banded together under Reddit's Wall Street Bets chat room to go ahead and buy up stocks that they feel is overly shorted or being shorted heavily. Now, what made these meteoric moves so explosive is the ability to create what's called a short squeeze. A short squeeze basically boils down to simple buying demand. If more shares are for sale than people are willing to buy, then the price will eventually go down until more buyers are interested. Now, on the flip side, if there are more investors that wanna buy a stock, then there are available shares to sell, then the price will eventually go up and up and up until the price reaches a point where the people that have the shares are willing to sell to those investors that wanna buy. When you're short selling, losses can be unlimited. So this causes people to kind of panic and head for the exits once the price of a stock begins to climb if they're pessimists and they don't really believe in the stock that they're holding. It's one of the reasons why GameStop and AMC went up so high. They are one of the most short sold stocks relative to their float, meaning the amount of shares available for trade. I gave you that brief exposition all to say this, investors need to face this grim reality that's in front of them. There's a key realization that investors of GameStop and AMC need to come to terms with. Cause really at this point, it's not even about a short squeeze any longer. What it's about now is day trading, mass speculation, and honestly, just flat out stock price manipulation. Now, take a look at this. As of January 15th, Morningstar data showed that there were 61.78 million shares of GameStop that were held by short sellers. That made it the only publicly traded company with a short interest above 100%. Prior to the beginning of the Reddit raid activity, GameStop averaged fewer than 10 million shares traded daily. This meant it would have taken days for short sellers to exit their position, assuming they all ran for the exit simultaneously. However, in the six trading sessions between January 22nd and January 29th, nearly 756 million shares of GameStop traded hands. That's nuts. It just said that on average, they were trading around 10 million shares per day for GameStop, and it would have taken them days to liquidate that 61.78 million shares of shorts that some people had. So how do you go from trading about 10 million shares a day to over the course of about a week or so, 750 million shares? What this tells us is that we're witnessing plenty of high frequency trading and day trading, and that we're well past the point of a short squeeze driving GameStop stock higher. The fact that it has high short interest is now inconsequential. Let's not forget about AMC. The same goes for them as well. AMC had 44.67 million shares held short as of January 15th, which is re relative to 114.94 million shares in its float. In the six trading sessions between January 22nd and January 29th, AMC saw nearly 3.58 billion shares, yes with a B, shares traded hands. Again, that's more than ample liquidity for short sellers to exit and 31 times the company's float. Nuts. But wait, 
there's more. To pour cold water onto this fire, investors need to come to the realization that emotions drive short-term gains or short-term swings in the markets. Long-term investors need to look at fundamentals of the company. They need to know what the earnings are, what the company plans on doing in order to make sound decisions on what they want to invest in. While GameStop did see its e-commerce revenue more than quadrupled during the 2020 holiday season, as it attempts to shift more towards digital sales, the company's overall revenue just keeps sliding and it's on track to deliver its third consecutive full year loss. GameStop is attempting to cut costs by backpedaling and closing physical stores in order to try to generate or make up some revenue, but I just don't see it helping. I just don't see it happening. I just don't see GameStop offering growth. And as of right now, the stock price is around $55 per share. Just yesterday, it was around $100 per share. So take that with a grain of salt. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Now, as for AMC, just two weeks ago, they narrowly avoided having to file for bankruptcy. They were able to generate almost a billion dollars by jiggering around some financing, some debt, some equity. They refinanced, shifted around to generate some revenue, as well as considering uh, bringing up new stock options in light of that AMC stock jumping up so high. As of right now, AMC is valued around four and a half billion dollars and it really shouldn't be anywhere near that amount given its recent losses, just losses across the board and its uncertain future. Even after this pandemic blows over, it passes, it's really not certain or it really can't tell that consumers really wanna go back to, into theaters to watch movies because streaming services are so popular. Why go out and watch a movie when I can just turn on the TV or turn on my phone and pretty much get on-demand access to whatever I feel like watching? So at this point, it's not really a matter of if GameStop and AMC will come crashing down to earth, come crashing back to reality, but it's just a matter of when. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I encourage you to smash that like button. It really helps me out with the algorithm. Also, consider sharing the video if you found it informative entertaining at all with a friend or family member that you think can benefit. Also, leave me a comment down below. I want to hear from you guys. Do you think I'm just being too harsh? Am I just a pessimistic? Do I not like GameStop or AMC? Do you feel like both of those stocks are going back to the moon and having a repeat of that January 2021 that they just had? Or do you also feel like they're going to come crashing right back down just the way they are? I also make videos just like this one every single week, multiple times a week on investing, finance, the stock market, and how to build wealth. So if you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to stick around and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.